What up, though? Welcome to Teacher Talk Podcast, brought to you by Teaching It Trill, where teachers keep it trill. I am your host, Tori J. Anderson. I am coming to you live right now from Detroit, Michigan. Hey, y'all supposed to say hey with me. Come on now, we got to put our city on. Put our city on. Um, I am joined today by six, is it six? I teach English, so, you know, my numbers might be off. Six wonderful educators. Um, I kind of just want to go around and let everybody introduce themselves. You can say your name or maybe you can just give yourself a code name. Um, maybe tell me what grade it is that you have the most experience teaching and what subject you teach. All right. That sounds good. Yep. We'll do a round robin. That's a whole educational strategy for those of you that didn't your know. Teacher showing. You might go. My teacher showing. <laughs> teacher Let's showing. put the teacher away. <laughs> We're on break. Michelle, 26 years teaching. Um, high school, ninth through tenth, twelfth grade, career tech and education classes, better known as CTE, business, accounting, marketing, and career readiness. Everything. Hey. Wow. I teach everything. That's what you should <laughs> I teach everything. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, Braxton, um, I'm, I was a teacher for ten years. Uh, I teach computers, uh, but I now am in the private sector but I also teach uh, uh, credit repair and credit reform. And so, and I, I sing internationally. So you sing? Yeah. Yes. I so just you, can, you can drop a, a little little verse for us at the end, yes? <laughs> yeah, I just came back from Germany, so too. So. Ooh, yeah. fancy. This is my turn. Uh, my name is Portia. I am elementary education. Um, this is my sixth or seventh year, um, primarily why are you shaking your head, Tori? That's <laughs> how you know when it's just going all downhill yeah. when you can't even count the years. I can't remember the years. Because of what I, st- I started mid year. So if you're looking at calendar years versus school years, yeah. it changes. I started in February, too. So primarily, uh, all subjects, my major was uh, science, minor, and ELA. Uh, what up, though? This is uh, Jamison Smith. I am a math teacher. Uh, I've been teaching in, uh, this is my 17th year of teaching. And, uh, you know, I do, I've been out. Public, charter, suburban, urban, I've been around. See? Mm. I am Sherry, uh, seven years in the field. I have worked with both elementary and middle school. Now I've stepped out of the classroom, instructional coach. So um, ELA has been my thing. And I'm Amber. I teach science. I've been teaching for seven years and primarily middle school. I like how everybody has their professional voices on, even though we're on. <laughs> <laughs> it's my phone voice. You gotta turn I like it on. Hi, this is, gotta turn it this on. is Tori Anderson. I'm going to just turn the shit off. All right, all right, was, I, I'm on a shit Ding. count. Like, that, was, that was one. Where's the bill? That was my one. All right. Um, I kind of want to just jump right into it. So I have a few prompts. Um, I kind of want our conversation to be... A little informal, and just to give you guys a little bit of background, kind of the inspiration behind the show, um, I have a lot of teacher friends and a lot of friends who are teachers, and maybe we'll talk about the difference between the two one day. Um, But whenever me and my friends get together and we have a few drinks, we always, always, always start talking about teacher-related topics. So what better, you know, idea to have a podcast? We got a few beverages. We got some microphones. Let's just talk about some teacher-related shit. Teacher, that was, that was you knew that was coming. Yeah, I, I couldn't help it. It was just, it just flowed so easy. So our first prompt is: my biggest first year mistake was. What was your biggest first year mistake? Who would like to chime in? Your I'll biggest mistake in. as a first year teacher. Take I'll a moment, in. think about it. I'm gonna give you some thinking time. I suck as a teacher. Just a little, just a bit of transparency. As a teacher, I suck at giving my students wait time. So. Same. Just want you guys. Everybody's same? So it's not yes, just me? All right. Same. That makes me feel good. I don't know if y'all, like, that's listening, if that y'all suffer from the same thing, but that's, like, my Achilles heel. First year mistake. I think I'll jump in for two seconds. I think my first year mistake was spending majority of my check on supplies for the classroom. Oh, man. Yes. No. <laughs> the whole episode. I, mean, I was no. excited when I, I was agreed. doing it. Like, oh, my lesson's going to be bomb because I'm buying this, this, and this. And I looked at my check and I'm like, wait, I'm not making enough. I can't pay my bills and buy the supplies. So that had to oh, be wow. my first year mistake as I, I reflect. <laughs> Husband is, is in the background and saying I can attest to that. Like the W twos, that little what's Man. what's the education credit or the the, the, the credit oh, yeah. that we get? Minuscule. I don't even. Right. 
Well, no, like only... keep your receipts for what? Seven mm-hmm. no. dollars. I keep my receipts. Oh no, no, especially because you have two science teachers here. Mm-hmm. I taught elementary science, and for elementary science, it was I felt I had to reminisce. My elementary school teacher was like Miss Fizzle. Mm-hmm. Her name was Miss Kabil. Yes. So she had live animals in her classroom. So when you talk about supplies. I had, I was like Noah's Ark. I had two turtles, two gerbils. Oh, I had yes. a guinea pig. I had fish. I had turtles, BT and LT, which stood for large turtle, big turtle, and, and little turtle. Creative. And, um, <laughs> hey. <laughs> we had, but here's the crazy thing about it. Because I had animals in my room, it kept my one of my administrators out because she was afraid of the animals. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Like right. Like Benefit. let me let, let me, me take think notes. about let me take <laughs> wisdom. We got wisdom in a room. Uh, let me just backtrack a little bit. I forgot to shamelessly plug myself. Um, this is episode one of Teacher Talk Podcast. It is titled Shit I Wish I Would Have Known About Teaching. That's three shits for me. Um going to give myself a quote of maybe ten. Who's counting? I am. Uh, it is titled Bleep I Wish I Would Have Known About Teaching. Um, and just to plug myself a little bit more, you can find me at Teaching It Trill on Instagram. Once again, that is Teaching It Trill on Instagram. Now, back to our conversation. Uh, first year mistakes. Anybody else? I think, well, I didn't have the issue of purchasing more things. My mother was a, is a retired teacher, English teacher, actually. But hey. And because of that, she you know she told me not to spend my money on those things. But that, that wasn't my issue. My issue was, because I'm a male, I felt that I could shout kids down. I thought getting, mm-hmm. being, you know, my bravado and, and being loud and boisterous would, would keep kids in line. Not um, so, and it's also draining. So I don't do it. I didn't do it. I stopped doing it. And uh, you find other creative ways to get students to do what you want them to do. Save your voice. Oh yeah. yeah. Save that energy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? First year mistake. I think my first year mistake was, and I hate to say this, but just say it, put making the, put it the kids the my friends. Like Mm. establishing that um, auntie relationship more so than like the authoritative relationship. That was my first year mistake because I was young and it was middle school. And I was like, these kids are going to eat me alive. They don't like me. And then I realized like they can hate me and still respect me and still do what they needed to do. What made you come to that realization? Sorry, I didn't ask anybody else a follow-up question. <laughs> yes, I know, right? I feel like I'm You're getting so, I'm sorry. I'm not playing favorites. I think I what made everybody. right. I think what made me come to that realization was the the different predicaments that the students put you in. Like when they're in my class and they're not supposed to be in my class, and I tell them to go somewhere, and they're like, "Oh, I was with her. Oh, I was here." And I was, oh, like, oh don't put my, oh, you put my name in your mouth. Oh, so I feel like the administrators or people were looking at me like, oh, you always give them a pass. And I was like, no, but I wasn't even with them. So I was getting blamed for things wow. that I wasn't doing because the kids thought I was the homie. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, You was no. the cool teacher, the one I can go to for the past. I will never be your homie. I definitely <laughs> I definitely <laughs> so, never again. No I turned friends. into that, you know. <laughs> um, I think my biggest first year mistake was not realizing, somebody told me a long time ago, like, yo, you're going to have to learn how to play the game and the, the game, right? The politics mm-hmm. and education. Mm-hmm. Not realizing that I'm thinking, I don't have to play a game. I could just come in here and be myself. And yes. I can just change the world and just be. <laughs> nah. Yes. Like, I realized, like, yo, this is a game and you got to learn the rules and you got to learn how to play it. Even if your game is saying that you're not playing a game, mm-hmm. that's still a game. Mm-hmm. So that's probably. One of my biggest first year mistakes is trying just being resistant against, you know, the politics behind education. And we can talk all day about that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Talk about a time where you felt completely unprepared to do this job or for this job. Like you felt like, yo, I don't know what it is I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not ready for this. Time out, abort mission, <laughs> pause. You mean from a from a pedagogical standpoint, from curricular perspective, any emotional perspective? Any any time where you just were not ready, emotionally, I'm sure we've all been there on a weekly basis. 
Like, maybe I'm not ready for this, but, I mean, you know, the show must go on. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. This year for me, I got moved from fourth grade after five years down to second grade. Oh, oh. Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> for, so no, for, no, no. for those of you I that know. are listening, you can't see our faces, but everybody in here, their uh, face just scrunched up like, Just Ooh. appalled. That was my face when my admin told me fourth the end of the year. Second? So, on top of that, I go from having about 25, 26 to 34, 35. Ooh. Exactly. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers <laughs> to that. <laughs> Cheers raise, to that. The, ra- raise the red cups up. <laughs> mm. And so having that transition right there, grade level wise, plus number wise, I literally found myself in the classroom like stuck one day. And 34 kids around me, and I literally just stopped and stood there for like five minutes because I was overwhelmed. Mm. And it was it was a lot. <laughs> 35 second graders. 35 though. second graders. Had you ever taught second grade? Before then, or back just any two, lower grade? Back in 2013 when I did my student teaching. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and they just threw you in there with 35 of them. Because of my test score. So that's why they moved me from fourth oh, grade down scores. to second with this third grade reading law that's coming into play. Sword. Test score. This year, second graders are going to be the first year at bat with the next year. Yep. So for those of you that are not aware, in Michigan, we just adopted a third grade reading law. Um, do any of my elementary educators want to chime in so I can make sure you know I put the right information about uh, Out you, about you the third me? grade reading law? Yeah, go well, ahead. You mean me? I'm, just, I'm sure <laughs> Sherry knows a little bit about it. Or I know a little bit about it, but I want to make sure I say it and I say it right because this is kind of important to me too. I mean, essentially, in a nutshell, the third grade reading law, you know, if the student goes to take that, uh, what was it the MSTEP test? It used to be called MEEP test, and they're not proficient to a certain degree, they can be retained in third grade for it. Mm-hmm. Y'all hear that, parents? That means your little third grader, they're not reading at grade level, might be retained. Go to Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> <laughs> Reading AZ. Uh, anybody else? <laughs> a time where you felt like you were not prepared. You 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 didn't know. Hey. Anybody else? I, I think that because it, it wasn't, for, for, I think the job is such an emotionally taxing job. You yeah. have to be um, strong from a perspective of emotional strength. Um, you're dealing with several different personalities every day, <laughs> uh, every hour of the day, possibly 150 different personalities. If you, um, school, if you yeah. come to sc- if you come to work and your own armor is cracked, um, you know, you can find yourself incapable of being the best you. I'll say that. Um, and that's not that that happened to me in my in the early stages of me teaching because this, you know, teaching was my second career, so life was already going on in full swing when I became when I became a teacher. So, um, I think that it's important to, to to keep your personal life in check because you can bring it can manifest it it, it can it it can manifest itself within your job, where in which you are incapable of doing your best. I'm being very vague for a reason because mm-hmm. I don't want I'm not trying to tell my business but yeah. at the same time but you've, you, you've got to be you know it, it's it's difficult at times because it, it's an emotional job you're dealing with with, with people this is a the job of people and we're creating may people be so yeah. um, they, 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 they have been know. times when you're yeah. off your square yeah. there's been times where life has, has 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 put me in a place where being my best was difficult and along with that it is so important that as teachers, you spend a great deal of time taking care of you. Mm-hmm. Because when you are in an environment where the, the dynamics of teaching include, I have a different set of 30, 28, 25 mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. If you're in high school, middle school, teaching elective classes, every 50 minutes. Mm-hmm. When I was teaching science, my father came to my classroom and said that by the time you get them settled and um, get everything going, you only have them for a good 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. So That's I called cool. it teaching. It's like it's hit it or quit it teaching. You have to be so on it mm-hmm. at all times. And the days when you the copy machine breaks down mm-hmm. and what you really needed was in that copy machine or the person that was supposed to copy it didn't copy it and you have to like 
recreate a wheel or recreate a, uh, a miracle and don't let it be something where it is technology based. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the technology worked at your house. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. That shit because will fail you. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> and technology, that is. You made sure it worked at your house. You had the speech ready and everything. And then you get to your classroom and the technology fails because there is a filter unbeknownst to you mm -hmm. for the district mm -hmm. that won't allow this thing to happen. Mm -hmm. So then you're sitting there. Um, looking real crazy. Looking real crazy. Yeah, whenever technology is in place, something is bound to happen. Oh, my oh. my cord broke. Like, uh. the, <laughs> yeah. the speaker's not going to work. The Bluetooth is not going to connect. The internet is The Wi Fi goes stuff. out. And yeah, you just got to talk to each other. What? You're standing around looking the YouTube crazy. YouTube is blocked. Yeah. 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 yeah, and and it's like we okay. need YouTube. And we need you know, Netflix. you got people coming right. around, and the <laughs> expectation is, as a teacher, you're on point every single day for mm -hmm. every hour, and you will have an administrator and then come when you through. Have a bad day, you got to be on point. Exactly, <laughs> and you're on. I mean, just the idea of being on point every day. It's overwhelming. With different you know you got different things that are happening you have somebody here may have had issues over the weekend that filter in through social media so you got to unhinge a fight maybe and things like that all of that plays into whether you can be on point how do you get back to being on point after all of that happened I think that's so important to even just consider like on our jobs we have to be on at all times because for some of our students my class might be the only structure you have in your life. Mm -hmm. And so, yo, you're dependent on when you walk in Miss Anderson's classroom, go get your journals with quick writers on the board. If you come in and Miss Anderson might be sitting down and, you know, her head is on the desk and her eyes are a little, you know, mm -hmm. you know because Miss Anderson is not on her A game. Like, you need Miss Anderson to be Miss Anderson. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of overwhelming sometimes. Like, we have to be flawless mm -hmm. or they know because they be knowing. They do. As soon as you come in, you okay today? Like, yes. everybody quit talking. Miss Lee don't feel good. She exactly. said, leave her alone. Right. Did you meditate right. this morning, Mrs. Smith? I remember um, yes. my, I was going through a breakup, and I don't know how my, I taught 11th grade for a long time. I was going through a breakup, and my 11th grade girls, these chicks somehow knew. Like, right? They're like, Miss Anderson, because they called the, the dude at the time. They either called him Greg or something that wasn't his real name. <laughs> they just called him <laughs> some <laughs> other kind of name. Like, Cold just pretending. It's like, well, you and, you and Greg broke up. And I just kind of looked at it and I was like, oh, no. And, like, they they wrote me letters. And I was oh, just wow. like, I was like, oh, y'all not so horrible after all. Y'all do care. Like, <laughs> I really do care. Like, they care, but they just care in a different way. But they know. Like, and that's crazy to me, like, how they can be so in tune with us. It, like you guys said, like, we got to be on. Um, let's see. I kind of want to jump around. What time is it? 7 o'clock? Can we take a break? We're going to go on a commercial break. I don't have commercials, though, so. <laughs> leave that in there. No? We're not on break yet? Just leave it all in. I want the outtakes and everything. <laughs> yes. Look, we need, like, pause music or something right now. Splash the music.
Should I tell them I'm coming back from a break? Yes. Yeah, we're and back. we're back. <laughs> <laughs> they said it for me. And we're back. And you got to do the head tilt. Like, we're back. Uh, we've got a little game. It's called Teacher Talk Bingo. So we're going to play a little bingo game. I'm going to call a few things out. Um, if you have it, uh, you know, just cross it out. And maybe if you just feel like sharing, you know, your little, your, your personal anecdote or your story. Did you <laughs> I did actually create you wrote Of course, these? I personally this created these. I like that. I found these on my free bingo cards.com because, you know, once again, as teachers, we overthink and we overplan everything. So, first one, uh, I'm going to say cuss the parent out. Mm. Anybody ever cuss a parent? It's like a out? professional clap back. Does that count? Yes. The professional clap back. Professional clap back. I love okay. the, the classroom where the professional oh, clap back. Is it like a vice like versa? Like, like a parent cuss me out? Yes, there is one. There is one on Lance that says, yeah. had a parent cuss you out. Yeah, yeah. So, cuss the parent out. Anybody want to share? All right. Caught down to the principal's office to talk. I'm very familiar <laughs> oh, with this oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All I do is get caught down. If to you the have principal's it, then you're not doing something right. Right. That's <laughs> right. 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 Absolutely. You don't agree? <laughs> no. You don't think everybody gets called down to no, the principal's man. office? I mean, it all dep- I mean, you could. Yeah, you could be. Down. If you're part of the team, you get called down all the time. Yeah. yeah. I got had to get used to the fact that I got called down for positive reasons because I always had such a negative connotation with being called down to the principal. Like, oh, what did I do now? So when I actually went down there, I'm all anxious, and he like, "Why are you nervous?" And I was like, "I have a healthy fear of authority." And he, like, and he was like, "No, I just wanted to talk to you about this, this, this." I was like, "Oh." Right. That's like, always <laughs> my first response when I'm in the principal. I'm like, what I do now? Right. Your name's called over the PA. Yes. Everybody here is like, Miss So-and-so, come down to the office. So it's like the walk of shame from yes. the classroom down to the, the office. The green mile. Walking the mile. What you do now? I don't know. <laughs> what did I do? For me, that's just like a regular occurrence. Like, call down to the principal's office to, quote, talk. You have a standing appointment? I have standing <laughs> appointments to talk. Every Thursday. Like, literally. Fifth hour. Apparently, I be doing <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there we go. <laughs> what was that, six or seven? We're going to say six. Threatened by a student. Oh, yeah. Yes. Anybody ever yeah. been threatened by a student before? Last week. My baby's love. Last week. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm so, we got an elementary school teacher But, in but here. I coach middle school, but I'm good. Oh. Little babies don't threaten. Mm-mm. High schoolers like to yeah. send veil threats, but okay. then I like to tell them I'm from East Seven Mile, <laughs> and I graduated from John East J. Pershing High Mile. School, and that just, you know, <laughs> simmers everything down. Yeah. I've heard babies threaten. I mean, threatening the right people though. They I'm know they kid. know who to play with. And I'm not I had one a of middle them. school kid. Well, this is my this is literally my first year teacher. And he and, you know I, I, I guess I was friendly. I've never been friends with kids, but he th- I guess he thought he was comfortable. I could tell he wasn't serious. But you don't play saying this. He said, "Mr. Smith, I'm gonna kill you." What? That's I, not a joke. That's exactly. a threat. That's that's an actual threat. And I pulled him to the side, and I won't say what I said to him. But I did let did him you, know. Hey, cuss a, oh, no. I cursed him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> check that, out, check that off in advance. Right, cuss a it out. The, uh, but, but, yeah, th- I've had multiple threats, but that was one I really remember when he said that to me. I told him, don't you ever say that to anybody. Because mm-hmm. in Detroit, and I'm from Seven Mile, too. Hey. And, um, and if you Three say those things playing with people, you know, it's a problem. Because yeah, sometimes they get comfortable with saying stuff. And it's do. like, hey, on the streets, like where yeah. I'm from, I'm like, really? You can't say stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. that's just a whole lesson I got to teach you off the record. Yeah, I, to let know. I, I had to teach that lesson uh, a couple of times. This, this one kid, he literally, uh, and, and he was a bright kid. He was from a well-educated family, but, but some he just wanted to be a thug for some reason. And on his fist, he had F. You spelled out and so you asked him a question. Was it in ink? No, it was a real tattoo. Oh man, F U the word. You know, serious. So, so (laughs) I would ask him. Well, I would ask him a question. He would go. No. Like radio right here. Was it at the academy that we talked about earlier? Right, right, right. Okay, that's why. Wow. So I was like, excuse me. He was like. <laughs> and so you know, he, he I wouldn't have caught on him anymore. I, just, you know, <laughs> no, I know no, how you right. feel. You know, so I walk in no, walking no, in. I was like, but I had to, I had to teach him a lesson. So he kind of threatened me. Whatever so you they, you know, they, they, they send him up to the to, to the, the principal. Of course, they never kicked anybody out of the school. Absolutely. So, so they brought him. They brought him back. Yeah. And they bring him back. Then they brought him back. But I was like. 
He came into class, and so the security they left, and I was like, "What you doing?" He's like, "I came back." I was like, "No." Oh my God, I hate that. I said, "You still got to get out." Yeah, I said, "You still got to get." When you put somebody out, you still got to get out. He looked at me like, "Come back in with a smile, with a smile, and a popsicle with a smile." Those memes though, like when you send somebody down to the office and they send them back, like so and so said, "I get to come back." Like who said it? I said, it, it, right. I said, it doesn't matter to me what they said because you haven't apologized to me. You got to go. So he walked out. And so I took him out of the hall. I said, look, man, you know, I'm from the, I'm from the east side. I'm from the east side. You got to stake yeah. your claim. Uh, I was like, because if you were in the dark That's alley. social currency. Me, I said, I'm, a big, I'm, I'm 6'4", 280, okay. okay? If we were in the dark alley. You wouldn't say that to me, <laughs> but you could you could say it in the classroom Give me because you know he's protected. You, you <laughs> protected. But I said, but if you put your hands on me in this bad. class, I would just have to lose my job. You know, because you're not, gonna, you're, not, charter, you're not going to hurt you me. You might not lose your job. Yeah, if you're public. Yeah, but like, if you're not, but if you're not going to hurt okay. me being in this class. You're not going to punch me, and I'm going to study and accept it. So don't think just because you're in this class that you're protected. If you swing on me, mm. it's going to be. It's going to be. And we got a lot of that. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, so and I and running back in the class, I had to, to the class when I and I pointed out to the class. I said, y'all can talk, but y'all stand in this class. But if y'all really was on. You know, standing somewhere, and we was in the dark alley, and we had to go head to head. You basically would, told them they're not about that life. Yeah, they're not. Life. You told them they're not about really, that life. You ain't really about this that ain't life. what you want. No. This ain't like this, this ain't what, what you want. want. There's a meme on social media, and I think it says, um, "I'm from the era of Nuck if you buck." Like if yes. you, if you, if you, if <laughs> what does it say? If your you teacher. Buck, let them know that your teacher is from the era of Nuck if you buck. <laughs> if you want to try her, or if you want to buck, it says buck wisely. Like just, just. Just so you know. <laughs> Just and so I think know. sometimes it's important because our students, they think that when they look at us, they're like, oh, you went to college. You graduated from college. Don't let the degree fool you. You right. don't hey. you don't know what Miss Anderson had to do to get here. Like, you don't you don't know Miss oh, Anderson. All my life I had to fight, okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, my life. Oh, my. Get the Miss Seeley rock going okay. on there. They don't, they don't want Seeley those rock. problems, okay? Like, you don't want it. <laughs> Uh, we sorry, we went off on a whole thing. <laughs> that, that threatened by a student. That I, and I'm sure oh, my man. listeners, I'm sure yeah. that yeah, probably like resonated with you because I'm sure everybody's probably been threatened by a student, especially if you're in the inner city. Oh, yes. especially if you're that's in the inner city. If, if you want to call it inner city, if you want to call it urban, I got a whole episode just about the whole title urban. Let's just say if you work with well, in an well. urban area. Um, you know, you you might have to get used to being threatened by your students. You just right. gotta just let the shit roll off your shoulders. Uh, that was, that's my shit count. <laughs> uh, this is a little personal. Cried at or after work? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you cried at or after? I know my 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 fellas in here. They not gonna want. Well, I'm, 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 yes. You know me. I keep it real. I did. And um, um, I told Can you, we I, get some soft I music no playing. Script, so. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> just, 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 just tell us. I just keep it at honey. But no, it was um, uh, actually happened twice. But um, the, the I, I'll share the moment. It happened at, at a middle school. Of course, and, of course, um, middle school. It wasn't middle school. Because, school. It wasn't because of something a kid did, or it's just middle school. Because I don't, I don't let that bother me emotionally, my job per se. But that's what I was, I was referring to earlier about life happening to you, and then you have to go to work, um, mm-hmm. and you don't know how difficult it is to maintain your professional decorum um, while at work, and yeah. you have all these other things going Absolutely. on in your life. So there was. You know, there was there was a, a time in my life where it was it was devastating to me, a, a, an occurrence in my life that was devastating to me, and I found out some some really horrible information the night before, and I went to work I'm like oh, I'm a man, I ain't got to do what I got to do, I get off work, blah, blah, blah. and I actually broke down. I didn't break down in class, mm-hmm. um, but I broke down, and um, the administrator took me into the um, to the library. We actually we prayed together. It was it was it was a moment, a defining nice. moment, as far as how I felt about people because she wasn't my friend mm-hmm. she wasn't she was a co-worker well, she uh, just showed you some real she showed genuine, me genuine human being kindness, human right. being kindness. and that's refreshing. Um, but that 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 happened to me i left work and um you know that's my story that i'm gonna tell <laughs> I, I've yeah. cried I've more cried. times yes. not in front of my students like you gotta oh, never you know of course you teachers, gotta do the g depends on the situation though. it does so it there the is there's this activity that i do it's called um it's a called a, you know, you guys know. It's called a Socratic seminar. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the shit gets real, real. Sometimes mm-hmm. the questions get really real. 
and it was actually just this school year. We were reading, we were getting ready for Romeo and Juliet. And, you know, Tibble, you know, Romeo had to kill uh, Tibble because Tibble killed Mercutio or whatever. I got to flex my English muscles or whatever. <laughs> um, but I got to keep it trill. And I asked my students, how many of you have lost a friend? Um, how many of you have had a friend who died? And I teach ninth grade. And all of them raised their hands. Mm. Every all single of last them? one of them raised their hands. Yeah. Wow. And for me, that, that hit me close to home because here I am. I'm 33. I have yet, and I'm very fortunate, I have yet to lose a friend to violence mm. or to gun violence or just to any, like all of my friends that have passed away have passed from like an illness or just something, you know, just some random thing. But I'm like, we have this whole generation of kids or of young people, I'm, I don't want to call them kids, of young people that are growing up and for them losing a friend is normal. Posting the RIP status is normal. Man. Having the RIP t-shirt is normal. And for us, like when we was in high school, that would have been devastating. And I got very sad for them. And I legit, like, I teared up in class. And like, Ms. Anderson, like, why you? Because they were getting emotional. Like, to the point I had to, you know, pull the plug on the Socratic seminar. Some girls went to the bathroom. Mm. I had to explain to my principal, hey, I got, you know, this, this Socratic. It's getting a little emotional. My new principal understood. But even at my old school, my old principal would understand, you know, shit gets real when we have a discussion. Right. You guys are so lucky. I'm saying that the, it's the, the S word today and not the F word. The F word, my <laughs> podcast will be marked like super explicit. Yes? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to share that. But um, I cried. And it's like, and I was talking to somebody and I was like, I don't think I'm, at first I wasn't ever comfortable with letting my students see me be emotional. Because I felt like I had to be like strong for them. I had to be the strength for them. I had to be this constant like, presence for them like Miss Anderson like you know she got it or whatever but like yo like I had to be vulnerable yeah. with them in that moment and it was good it was like very very it was it was organic so I think people have mis misplaced um, compassion emotion as weakness yeah. it's actually displayed Absolutely. strength and children I think so too. even though I think sometimes we, we we don't we don't give kids credit for being people they're human yes, beings at all. and and they can see that being vulnerable is strength. It it, it took it took you to be strong to allow your emotions to ring through. And I think kids pick up people pick up on that, particularly children. Particularly children because they pick up on they are some of the most unique and meanest people I've ever met in my <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> All in one. You said unique and mean <laughs> no, unique because and mean. <laughs> um this they this, are cruel. They are. Children are cruel. People are they cruel. Honest, are they taught me that in my <laughs> child psychology they, class. They said adolescent you know. children are not likable creatures, but they <laughs> seek, <laughs> but they seek love and acceptance, Seven but they fingers. repel everything that but is. Some is, of them go about it in the regular most to them, messed you know? up way. Yo, I need, mm -hmm. I need you to love me, so I'm gonna cuss you out. Right. I'm gonna show up to your class late, and I'm gonna just do everything to get your attention in the well, wrong way because well, I want you to love chicken. me. I want you to love. Like when your kids come with chicken. Yo, a kid, <laughs> a, a the plate, a plate of chicken. chicken. The plate of chicken. Came to my class. I'm doing it. So here's my thing. I'm. I don't even. I'm. A master teacher. I do. I teach and I coach. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a teacher's classroom, and I smell chicken. It's it's eight o'clock in the morning. Bible. It's eight ish. <laughs> Bible. Okay. <laughs> and for y'all that that's listening, that don't know what Bible that means, like facts. This is like mm -hmm. legit. Even though we know that. Well, I'm not gonna say that. I got <laughs> <laughs> I Almost went off on a tangent. But I smell chicken at eight o'clock in the morning, and I'm looking around like because food in my class is taboo. My kids don't. You don't eat in my class, even the little fruities. Like, I have a fit. Like, I'm, number one, I'm going to have a fit, and I'm going to take them. I'm going to eat them if they're my favorite. But this kid has a whole plate of chicken. First hour. Was it with waffles? No, it was just chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the, was the, here's, it fried? It was fried chicken. <laughs> it was but fried it looked chicken. so... But here's the thing. He had a plate of chicken. Did he have Frank's? It, it had hot sauce it. on it already. <laughs> he had a plate of chicken for lunch. I mean, for, I'm sorry, for breakfast. And then he had another plate. Under his desk on the floor <laughs> for lunch. Come on, are you serious? He had two plates of chicken. I don't even know how we got on the fried chicken thing, but that was just unbelievable for me. 
like a whole plate of chicken. <laughs> what did you do? Whole wings. Do they have lockers? You the teacher and asked her. I didn't. Why. I didn't stop the teacher. I didn't say anything. I just took a picture of the kid with a plate of fried chicken and posted it on social media because it was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> my thing is like, I'm not. Mind you, the moral of the story is I'm visiting got about thousand likes. <laughs> I'm visiting. Right. 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 Make him right. go viral. Right. I'm visiting the teacher. Right. You you supposed to be teaching, and I'm not even gonna talk about the what was not happening. Right. The fact really is, this kid is the kid happening. is eating. Oh, we're all teachers. We know what's not, what's not happening because the kid was eating a whole plate of fried chicken <laughs> and passing it around in front of him, passing it and going around, around giving people pieces. No, so we know nothing is, this day is going Christmas. on. <laughs> no, it wasn't before Christmas. I don't even know when I posted it, but it was not. It was not before. before it was not before a holiday. It wasn't a full right. moon or anything. It was a random. It was a, day. It was a regular yeah. day. October the twelfth. Whole plate of chicken. <laughs> like full week. Right. I'm sorry, guys. We got we are digressing, but it's unbelievable. If you guys follow me on <laughs> Instagram like right at now. Teaching It Trill, <laughs> you will see the whole plate of chicken. I'm not embellishing. I'm not. It's the whole plate it's of chicken. There for real. I don't even know and where we were. Apparently, the chicken slept. Paper plate with foil. A paper plate is the whole class just smelled like chicken oh, wow. and I'm like and I know if I peeped it and I'm visiting mind you I'm visiting I'm observing whatever right, right, I'm not right. evaluating I'm just visiting and I'm observing because that's my role you got a kid eating chicken like what <laughs> come on now Man, like, like, fine. no I left after that yeah, I just I left after that, that because I knew it was wraps I knew like realistically yeah. instructionally not much can go on because number one, you got a kid eating a whole plate of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> He's not in the classes. Either. At first, th- exactly <laughs> first hour, first hour first in the morning, hour. you got a kid eating a whole plate. Like, mm-hmm. what kind of instruction can go on around day. that? Like, somebody just, I'm teaching. Here you go. And are you here? <laughs> <laughs> right. I, you, you know, you it bring smelled, up, a, but but like to chicken. to make this somewhat relevant to. To our discussion, yeah, sorry, yeah, we went yeah. off on this. Right, let's bring it back. So, home. So, so, bring it so, so if if. Let, let's say it's not a whole plate of chicken. Let's say it's lunch or breakfast that they give you. They yeah. give the students. Oh, and man. the kid comes in late. Mm-hmm. And But we all know that some of the kids, the parents bring them in late and the kid doesn't have any breakfast. And so eat. they have to eat. And so you may, yeah. and I, I've had this experience where you've got five kids sitting in the, in the classroom at 8.15 eating cereal and you know, protein bars and, yeah. and milk, or you give it to is them that because ex- the school exactly. cuts it off, and you got to you, because they hungry. So, <laughs> so what do you? I mean, because I keep a stash. Even though you know, this kid at least had food from home, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, you know, can't be mad. You can't be mad at him, even though Hold it wasn't the, the best thing to do. We, <laughs> we do it all the time. It, it should be a community thing, but though. It, I you think know, the thing like thing passing the chicken around is a little disrespectful. Yeah, passing the chicken around. But the other thing was the fact that. Well, if you've had chicken with hot sauce on it, you know for a fact that, you know, it's going to kick. It's going to smell. Yeah, that's true. But for the teacher to not acknowledge it, to say, okay, look, let's work something out here. Mm -hmm. I need you to put that up. Mm -hmm. Why don't you put that on my desk so we can, you know, go on with the lesson. Or just don't pass it around. Some some type of parameters. Because my yeah. man's is walking around giving people pieces. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't share that part. My man's yeah. is walking around. So oh, he's doing a strolling brunch. He's going around, yeah. He's he doing a so- strolling brunch. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was a little. My man's is walking around giving other students pieces of chicken. It was at that moment where I'm like, okay. Because I understand, like, sometimes, and people don't even, like, understand this. Sometimes kids come to school hungry. Yeah. I don't, I'm 33. I don't even eat breakfast. So I get it. You might not have time in the morning. You might be hungry. If a kid is hungry, if, they, if they're off their game, they can't learn. I'm going to let you eat, but, but whole wings, and you pass them around the class. Whole wings with Franks on them. <laughs> if you're going to bring yeah. chicken, eat it I'm quietly. I'm just trying to paint the picture. Yeah, eat, it like, eat it quietly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you're going to bring chicken, and, and if you got, like, just, the moral of the story is, if you're going to bring chicken in my class and Give eat it during first hour. <laughs> bring me a first leg. First of all, bring me a, no, not even a leg. I need a whole plate for myself. Oh, God. And sit at your desk and eat it. Yeah. Next door. Oh, Lord. Next one, walk out of the class to save your job. How many of you have ever had to walk out to to save? Because you're like, look, Lord, if I don't leave out this classroom now, I'm losing my job. Mine was piggybacking off of uh, what you guys mentioned earlier when they send that kid back. (laughs) So <laughs> now, I don't send kids out. They so if I that. send a child out, it's serious. Keep it is on. rare. Send a child out, and they sent the child right back. And the student was so disrespectful. I grabbed my purse and my coat. I called security and said, can you please come to my class? On my way out, I stopped at the office, and I let the principal know, you already know the situation. I asked for a five-minute break. You sent them back, so I'm leaving. <laughs> 
And he said, no, 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 So no, wait, no, you no. wait. Wait a minute. No, you, I was. You I was had going your to stuff be, packed. You were. Yes, you were I had my go. purse, my coat. I had somebody cover in the clothes. Sometimes you got to put the pressure. So you prepared and, it well. So yeah, and then he realized that I wasn't playing because I'm the class that they send the kids to. I'm right. the ones like bring them. Yep, send them. Send them right. to me. I get them together. Yeah, some back. Partner teacher. You're and the partner I just teacher. needed a break, <laughs> a five minute break. Critical and I was literally ready to like just be done with it. And he was like, you know, I'm sorry. I'm gonna take them for the day. And you go back and get yourself, yep. Yeah, and you get, yep, you get back to class and do what you got to do. I mean, I felt bad, but it was like, you can't do this. Like, I do too much for you guys here for you not to give me this five minutes I'm asking for. And sometimes you got to, you have to pull a ring. Sometimes you got to say, yo, like, I need, I need this time. Like, because once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're human beings. I don't know if there are any non-teachers listening, but if there are any parents out there, any administrators, you know, just a heads up, teachers are human. Well, no, I actually got so ticked off that I went to the dean's office. And when I went to the dean's office. Y'all got a dean, though. Yeah, well, Sorry, it's just a whole Yeah, but, but no, no, <laughs> I, didn't send, I didn't send a kid to the dean's office. I sent me to the dean's office. Oh, because sometimes, sometimes it'd be that. like that. <laughs> there was and and, and, and I, I gave myself a timeout. <laughs> and it was like, I just couldn't do it this day. And it was like, okay. And once I vented and took several deep breaths, I went back. But if I hadn't have did that. Yeah. That would have been my job. Yeah. Not even my job. It wouldn't have been my job because, first of all, there's a teacher shortage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let that be known. No, just let that be known. I mean, I'm not saying I can go around uppercutting, like, Mortal Kombat in kids because I'm not that Get kind of teacher. Here. Get <laughs> over here. Get over here. I'm not huh? going to do that, but I'm just saying. Um but sometimes you need a break because you want to maintain that professionalism. Like, I don't ever want to be that teacher that's, like, cutting into other people's kids. I don't ever want to be that teacher that's, like, demeaning and belittling, belittling a child. So before I know if I'm getting to that point, I'm going to walk out the room. Like, I like to walk out. I like to pray in the middle of class. And my students think it's comical. Like, they think it's funny when Miss Anderson stops and just, like, Oh, no, I put a playlist on Spotify with that. We we need to come to Jesus moment sometimes. We do. Yeah. <laughs> like, we do. They know what mood I'm in based off of the trill music or the subtle music or the smooth jazz. Or if we know that we've had that type of week, you will hear gospel. I will ask my kids, <laughs> separation of church and state, if it's disrespectful for anybody, you know, these songs don't have this and that. But we, oh, the yeah, playlist yeah. is there because y'all need something that I can't give you <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bingo, because we're still playing bingo. Side-eyed a coworker in staff meeting. Uh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> the one that's always asking questions <sighs> is 455. You know we're ready to go at 5. Oh, I got one more question, one more question. No, you don't. No, don't ask any ask questions. Ask it after. The meeting send, has been adjourned. Send, send an email. an email. Send an email. Like, don't, don't be that. Listeners, don't. If you are that coworker, the one who has that burning, itching question, Ask three before me. Ask three before you <laughs> ask the, the person facilitating the meeting. Cuss the student out. I have the baby's I, mean, I, I, I feel can't. like. This is being Define taped cussing. and I will not. Right. I mean, I feel myself. like a stern talking to is different. <laughs> yeah, from we don't curse. Out. Teachers, no. first of all, teachers, we are saint-like, and we don't do those kind of We don't curse. Especially when in the door those closes, avenues. it's closed. Okay. If we're we going to okay. keep this 100. Okay. If we're going to keep this 100. Of course you guys know we're just bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to give you a pass because, you know, you had a compound word right there. I was going to give you a pass. Can you ring that again? They just... <laughs> Count that as two. Okay. No, no, because um, I had an interesting dilemma. Interesting. I like that word. Yes. And I had a senior student get really upset at a ninth grade student because naturally when you do electives, you have all the grade levels in one class. Of course. Of course. Because they think that's fun. And Whoever's making the schedule thinks it's a great idea to mix. Yes. Good old counselors. Yes. <laughs> no, no, we can't take counselors. everything out on the counselors. <laughs> The counselors, they, they don't know the mix when they create the mix. Yeah. It's counselors, after the they, counselors need love, too. Shout out to all the counselors out there that's listening. We know y'all got counselor issues, too. And Let's have a counselor talk one day. That's so <laughs> Get at me. <laughs> but uh, the senior student is like 6'3", weighs a good, you know, 210, two, 220. Two oh, he's 20. a big guy. And I pull him out in the hallway. 
in the middle of, and you'll understand this this connotation, the middle of Hallway 100. Mm. And I go at him. I go at him. I use the word that you've been beeping out all the time. Shit. Things. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> and Don't be afraid of it, guys. Embrace it. Right. And I realize I'm in the 100 hallway, which is the main hallway of the school, and I am fussing at this child, and I am looking up, mm -hmm. pointing up at him, and I am treating him like I would treat my son. The only thing I haven't done is push him into a locker yet. Mm. And it was I, getting there. Almost. Yes. But here's the thing. After we had that conversation. He was probably a kitten. We got along great. He was a kitten. But That's I don't know why going. we had why to get have to, to get to, to that level. You have to. I tell the not kids all you the have time. To. I do well, not I want to cut you, you first. out in order for us to be where we are. Can't we just be where we are? So here's mm -hmm. my thing. It's not fun it's, that we gotta understand, like they're at home. <laughs> not saying like it's everybody's home life. So I allow myself one curse word a year, and it's normally the same thing. I normally tell a student, "Get the get the bills ready." Y'all ready? I normally tell a kid, like when they take me there. I say, I want to say an F word, guys. I say, get the F out of my classroom. Can I say F? It's up to you. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I normally, like, it, when a student has been, like, just, it, so I'm, I'm going to paint a scenario just so you're not thinking I'm, like, this whole Wicked Witch of the West. They got to be disrespectful. They got to be, like, verbally, like, that combative. It ha they have to be, like, they have to take me there, right? And it takes a lot for me to go there because I'm pretty zen these days. I'll tell a student, get the F out of my classroom once a year. Now, a lot of my, well, not, not colleagues, but I know a lot of teachers, they curse in everyday practice. For me, hmm. I just get that one time a year. And it only takes that one time a year for students to know, yo, Miss Anderson, she crazy. She real life crazy. Not crazy, like crazy, crazy, but she real life, like, yo, she might have just, do I respect her now? Like, is she? And it's crazy because. I, I don't feel like that we should have to talk to students like this, mm. right? But think about sometimes their home life, where they're coming from. When they don't, I hear people in the store, in the grocery store, right, talking to their kids a certain way. And it bothers me because I'm like, yo, is this, like, normal? I talk like, to that on the phone, like, in the classroom. Yeah, when you oh, call man. a mom, like, when you call a parent, you be like, yo, Ooh. let me put, take this off speaker for away. Like, ma'am, turn they, the volume down. They're so loud, they're not on speaker. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't. Is I, it normal? I, it's def, it's. I'm not in their home, so I can't say what they do and don't do in their homes. However, I do know how the students respond mm -hmm. to not being cursed at, mm -hmm. but cursed to. Mm -hmm. um, if I can say that, I'm not an English person, but you, I'll try to be precise. I get but what anyway, you're saying. But the point of it is that um, I'm cursing I, you out, or I'm cursing at you. Yeah, I curse. I, a difference. Yeah, I I I, I curse. I curse at students at times to, to, to emphasize a particular point. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not often, it's not frequent, but it, it's done strategically to gain their attention mm -hmm. and understand and how... all else fails. And it works. Sad to say... It works. Um, particularly mm -hmm. when you're dealing with urban students, however you want to Urban, do that. black, whatever, um, inner city. Right. Um, black, brown, th sorry. Th They respond to um, words that are colorful. <laughs> like combing that young Or said. a voice intonation that's colorful. Like if I maintain this pattern of speech the whole time, mm -hmm. they're, they're not, fine, they're the not moment, listening, but the moment my voice gets up here, start clapping, and then the now all of a sudden it's like, oh, Miss Miller, oh, right. <laughs> like, oh, we need to sit down. Everybody needs to sit down and listen. See, I'm the opposite. Everybody I get quieter when listen. I'm tired of dealing with them. And that they way they force wow. them to listen. So I'm like, I'm not about to sit up here and raise my, you know, my stress levels and my blood mm -hmm. pressure. Like, you know what? That might be some elementary zen. That You're would, not even that would be. I'm like, okay, okay, not the I'm like, graders. you know what? That's what we're not going to do. <laughs> oh, no. Because it forces them to listen now. Mm -hmm. They have to get quiet. Because, now, I do that in high school. I will sit down sometimes. Mm -hmm. I will take my care, like, <laughs> because not done. Don't, don't for, even ask them. For my, for, for my lovely ninth grade, Write it down. I did explain to them that if you think I'm nutty now, you have not seen me nut up yet. If you think you're lonely. I'm sorry. Right. Can Same. I say that? Can I sing that? <laughs> Wait don't sue me. I don't have no money. Wait until. I don't own the rights to this music. I'm sorry. It just reminded me of that. 
that. But <laughs> there is something about just sitting and being record. quiet because it's like, look, you've obviously done something wrong. Mm-hmm. And your and what happens is is that the other classmates start going, yo, yo, yo. Because yeah. they'll check each other. Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, something wrong. I love here. that. Check each other. Yeah. I love that. And it's like, and but th- does it take patience to do that when your first inclination is to go on the top level mm-hmm. of yelling? And sp- it's like, I can't do this. And that was the difference. Last year when I was fourth grade, I was in that middle school wing too. And it was the seventh, <laughs> eighth grade. Oh, it, it's because of the layout oh and everything. So well, it's, in elementary school, you were in a... I'm in a K, I was in a K building. Okay. So fourth, fifth grade was upstairs with middle school. K through was downstairs. And so where my room was, I was right next to eighth grade homeroom. Mm-mm. And fourth and fifth grade is with eighth graders. It's but it, fourth, fifth grade was same hall. It just happened administrator because I was in the corner. <laughs> shout them out. No, no, just just no for disaster. Out. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So um, with that particular eighth grade teacher, she was always yelling. And it even drove my fourth graders nuts, but they were able to still manage through during silent reading, her yelling and everything, even with the doors open. And she would come in like, wow, this is what quiet sounds like. I'm like, And she never had to hear me yell. But I, I could literally hear her yell. My door closed, her door yell, or her door closed. And I could still hear them. Mm. But she never heard me yell. I don't think I yell now these days. I think I'm more of a sit down, but sometimes, especially now that I have ninth graders, when I had 11th graders, I could just sit down in the middle of the room. Sometimes I would just fall out on the floor because I'm extra dramatic like that. Like I would just I pass out. Yeah, you could, you, you I guys, see those we of you that know me can see me. Like mm-hmm. I was a communications and theater arts minor. Sometimes I would just pass out in the middle of the floor. Um, but now I might just be like more of a sit downer. We've got 15 minutes left, and I've got this whole bingo thing, but I've also got some cards, and I'm a little torn. So I'm going to let you guys choose. Um, what do you feel is the most difficult aspect of our jobs? I feel we've talked about it. Um, I kind of want to stay with bingo. Where do you guys want to go? It's fine me. Oh. It's your world. So this is episode one, Shit I Wish I Would Have Known About Teaching. Uh, I kind of want to tie it in. What do you think are the most uh, five the five most important things to know about teaching or being a teacher. Or you can answer the question, if you could do it all over again, if you can go back in time and you can rechoose your major freshman year or whenever. <laughs> <laughs> We're all laughing. If you could choose to become an educator, would you do it? If so, why? If not, why not? So. Five things I wish I would have known. Okay, five things. That every two years we're going to change <laughs> how we're going to be evaluated. Amen. Every year, year and a half, we're going to change how we do lesson plans. Some of them are going to be so detailed, it's going to look like a thesis. I think mm. I've had like a different template every year so far. So, so far. <laughs> stuff is always changing. I almost said, sure, honey, I see. What, am, I, am I at 10? No. You're like a 12, I think. But, but who's <laughs> counting? <laughs> We've who's already counting? been with It's all in the way. Three. <laughs> three. That it would interrupt your personal life on the level that it interrupts your personal life. Yeah. Mm. From yes. about mid-July, if, you, if you're high school, maybe middle, from about mid-July into June, the second or third week, if you are in a high school doing like a mentorship program like DECA, like uh, robotics, any of those type of things along with teaching, mm-hmm. your personal life, you basically tell you your, your personal life. Tell your significant other, I will see you in June. I know I live here and I help pay the bills, but <laughs> I will right. see Man. you in June. Say Please that. forgive me. Even just with Say anybody that. doing any extracurriculars or anything like that, and like that's kind of been some of my hesitancy about like just taking on additional responsibilities at my school because it's like, yo, I'm going to be here until 6 o'clock. I don't want to be those, one of those teachers that's there until 6. See, it worked out for me with coaching and everything because I was able to put my husband into it. Because he has that sports background also. So we coached um, track together the past few years at the school. When I took on the AD position, he, you know, was on board with that. So we was able to kind of do that together. So that did help. And then on top of that, his grandmother who raised him was a teacher for like 30-plus years. Oh, so she had game. So I still pull stuff from her. 
Yeah, so I am with I'm like he's always like my mom was a teacher. I don't know how in the hell I married a teacher. I'm like, but here we are. Right. <laughs> You'll be okay. Stop complaining. Number four? Or I think that was four. And number five was the fact that to be a teacher is the most insane thing <laughs> to be paid. <laughs> to be paid what you're paid. Barely paid. And then have to go back to school every five years to keep receiving pay that is underwhelming for the amount of education that you have obtained. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, some of us have more education than some doctors, and we are not paid at the same level. That's just the whole country thing. But I read in an article, 2019 is going to be the year of the teacher for the year of the teacher S-word. I'm not going to say it on, uh, on air, but we know what the S-word is. Not yeah. sure, honey, iced tea. I read it today myself. Yes. yes. Say it again for the listeners that might have just tuned in. Strike. <laughs> Dang. We out of here. Parents say those off days, just letting you know. Look we might California be. California about two weeks. We might Man. be out of here. If, California, if, L, if L.A. pulls it off, <laughs> the bigger on. unions will be up on. Um, Anybody else? Five things, five most important things, or if you could do it all over again, would you choose I, to I got educate? one big one. It's not. I don't want to. Maybe can I do one big one? What 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 with the, the five Got things? Five. But it's only one. Okay. Okay. And um, but I do it over again. The answer is yes. I would. But um, <laughs> yeah, we're crazy, yeah. insane, <laughs> right? Insane stuff. Uh, the um, <laughs> the one thing you know that I've learned. This is sad to say. I've been to many different places, and I'm gonna get to the to the point, the, the crux of it. And it is that s- school districts' goal. You would think it would be to, to to you would think it would be to get the best and the brightest out of every child, but it is not. Yeah. School districts, episode. particularly in this area, but I think around the country, its goal is to suck the least. The goal is not to be the worst. Mm. So as long as you've got other districts or schools that are beneath you, you're okay. Hmm. You can do whatever you want. You can hire your cousin, Social your buddy, hierarchy. your friends. Mm-hmm. You can put anybody in positions you want to. The state will not, you will not be on the state's radar. If you are a low-performing school, you are on the state's radar. You will be, you, you will have to cha- have changeover. They'll be bringing in programs. You'll have state oversight. But as long as you aren't the one of the bad schools, and that's what the goal is, just to be just above the 5%. Barely passing. Mm-hmm. You can do whatever you want to do. That's Give me that hot 61%. D minus. Give me that <laughs> hot D minus. That's 61% right there. It's like, there. that's still passing. We want the D minus. I tell D's, my kids all the time. D's get degrees. No. Not celebrate no. mediocrity. That's crazy. Anybody else? I if got five. I, I came up with three. If I could oh. do it all over again, I'd still Look do it. nice teacher handwriting. I was trying to, like, empower the ones who are coming as educators yes, please, and listening. Yes, y'all, because I got to um, retire in 80 you, years. Right. <laughs> in 80 years. Real <laughs> Can't retire before um, then. I would say <laughs> one is be passionate. You have to have an I'm affinity great. for this work. Yes. And I've yes. met so many teachers who do not and mm-hmm. it's discouraging when you're that change agent, when you're that yeah. facilitator of masterful instruction and, and you have kids you. that dread leaving your room mm-hmm. and going into mediocrity, you know? Mm-hmm. So you have to be passionate about this work and you have to be flexible. That's my second thing because mm-hmm. they changed the evaluations. Mm-hmm. I remember when I did student teaching, my lesson plans were like 10 pages. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I first went to my first um School, they were like, oh, your lesson plan is only two pages. I was like, two? I don't have to have this and this and this and this. So it was enlightening, to say the least. And now I have to submit lesson plans where three years ago I didn't. And now I do this, you know. And science is constantly changing. I'm embarking on a new curriculum that our district adopted. And I not only am the youngest person in the science department in our district, but I'm the lead in the middle school. So having to, oh, like, wow. do that and facilitate that and train everybody else, it was kind of like, oh, well, Whoa. whatever. And I'm sure you you're know? getting hit with the whole, well, I've got 30 years. Yes, but you didn't apply for the lead position. And why you ain't do this? Experience. When, I, when he wanted expertise. the lead, everybody was like, not it. But then when I, we want to be the lead, now everybody wants to just... Pile everything. And number three? Adapt to any challenge. Yes. So whether it be the students, whether it be the staff, whether it be the drama, adapt. Yeah. Adapt. Sink or swim, pretty much. It's sink or swim. So 
We are talking about teaching like it's like a whole. Like, no, this, <laughs> no, 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 not about this life. Like, no, no, people, it is. It is. It is a job that I would call baptism by fire. <laughs> Man, right yeah. of passage. Because I mean, you I've you're going to fire. you're going to I've you're going been. to get you're going to get the child who loves you. You're going to get the child that I don't care what you do. Mm-hmm. You're not going to reach, and you have to accept that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Another you're podcast. not gonna, you can't yes. save everybody. That's my number four. You cannot <laughs> save everybody. I'm still yeah. learning. Yes, that yeah, right. Cannot I think I can. save yes, everybody. Yes, yes. And I you like try. The moment I give up, though. Yes. The moment I yeah. give up trying to save everybody is the moment where I feel like you I always to have to try, but you have to know that mm. they still gotta go home. I've had kids that told me, I don't know what I'm gonna do without you during the summer. Oh, yeah. You, I don't know what I'm going to do without you during the break. Like, I need, you're the normalcy. I need this energy. I need this positivity. And I don't have it anywhere else. You can't expect me to be anything more than what I am because I got to go home. And that's uh, a whole nother podcast right there. <laughs> oh, look, we got a whole. So, so seven, I don't go thank home. you guys for joining <laughs> us for our episode one for our launch of Teacher Talk. The Teacher Talk Podcast, um, where teachers keep it trill, brought to you by Teaching It Trill. Um, I'm so glad uh, those of you that joined me today were just kind of able just to come and just just be open and just be honest and just share your experiences. Um, I created, well, I kind of wanted to create this platform just to give teachers a voice because I feel like sometimes we are very, very undervalued. Not even sometimes. True. We're undervalued in this no, country. No, we are undervalued. Uh, nobody listens to our voice. Nobody wants to listen to us un- listen to us until it's too late. Um, and so I really felt it was very important just to kind of bring us all together and for us to just do this on a consistent basis because it's kind of therapeutic, too, just to be surrounded by educators. Um, you guys can find us at on Instagram at Teaching It Trill. Um, you guys can find us also at Podcast Detroit. Uh, Teacher Talk Podcast. Uh, I Once again, I am your host, Tori J. Anderson, the trillest English teacher in the land. Uh, I would like to thank my guests today. Hopefully you guys will be back in January for our episode two of Teacher Talk. I have an episode title, but I don't have it in front of me right now, so you guys are just going to have to <laughs> wait and see. Uh, hopefully I won't drop as many S-bombs. Maybe next time I'll drop F-bombs. Who knows? <laughs> oh, thank you guys for tuning in.